once you know the target once you lock it sir then you just have to go there you can find 100 obstacles but your focus should remain on what you want to do and that uh, consistently being persistent psychotically being optimistic against all odds these are the only things that will take you because there are a million people and million reasons why you should fail when you're taking a big risk like that Hello guys, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, once again, I am with uh, Captain Albert. Uh, how are you, Captain Albert? Very fine, thank you, sir. So nice to see you here, guys. You know, uh, it's a very uh, auspicious occasion that I am today with uh, Albert in his own office in Anheri, Mumbai, and uh, I thought to discuss something more what we discussed last time. So, Albert, uh, you remember last time when we spoke, we sure. spoke a lot about. Uh, Special forces and army yes. and other things. Today, I wanted to correlate. As teenager, you were a rebellion. When you joined army uh, in the first unit, again you rebelled there. Sir. And when you came out of the army, you again uh, become uh, khataron ka khiladi. And finally, what you are doing is again is something different. So first, tell me how this all. your uh, personality of rebellion then playing with khatron ka khiladi how that culminated into a company which you are running right now that you call it a sage s a i g yes so well uh, professionally special forces then uh, coming out got into consulting then later we started the company sir and when we started the company we saw most of the forgeries who come out are uh, generally into the uh, security domain operations domain and hr and so on and so forth and in the security domain per se there were lot many players and we looked around and we realized that uh, we don't want to do the same thing so that gave birth to the idea of saig specialist advisory and intervention group so whatever we do our thought process stemmed from the fact that in the battlefield the generals needed A very capable, very high power team, high highly skilled team for activities. We figured that the corporate leaders, right on top, could also use uh, highly specialized skills like ours, but in a corporatized version. And that gave birth to SAIG. We really wanted to be different, so the company grew from there all the way from uh, initially into the executive and event protection, very specialized protection related mandates, all the way to now into uh, highly specialized. intelligence gathering and operations capability with a ton of data science and ai into the mix so uh, can you uh, just uh, for our viewers uh, who are uh, may not be that uh, technically savvy sir if you can tell advisory and intervention yes if you can define both these terms yeah. so that uh, the common man or the people can understand what exactly is uh, says yes about so advisory is as classic as it sounds like you have a good doctor to advise you a good lawyer to advise you uh, similarly in the domain of risk we bring a lot of skill sets and experience all the way from very small aspect all the way right, right up to counter terrorism level issues so that's the consulting the classical consulting component where we are able to advise review advise and then ensure that things are in the right manner right there is you may have the best advice but life will always take you to situations now businesses can fall into very very uh, difficult situations and some of the solutions out there can be done by most of the people out there you know you may have a ton of doctors but then you may have very ultra specialist in certain certain niche areas our intervention part is something like that when a situation happens we take on that responsibility no matter how complicated the problem is and it's not necessary that saig has all the expertise in house all the time some of the cases are very very unique but what we have built over the years is a huge network globally of experts from all walks of life whether it's litigation whether it is intelligence whether it's liaison we have built a very very trusted partner network so we bring in that team and own that responsibility so if you are an organization 
you are good at handling the business. You never expected this trouble to happen. We come and take that trouble as ours. And then we manage it for you. That's the intervention part. Sir. So that's why it's specialist advisory and intervention. But special forces ka banda, which is you, sir. You fought the enemy on the, uh, maybe on the LAC or LOC. Kahan se uske dimaan mein germinate hua ki finally he should become an entrepreneur. You know, you change to the, uh, uh, gone into the, uh, 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 this uh, uh, film and television also, Khatraon Ke Khiladi and all. Then suddenly this business ideas, how you correlate that learning of special forces and transform into the business, how they are correlated. Uh, I, I'm sure that some of the learning, fantastic learning of the special forces, you must be implementing in this. That is why you are successful. Absolutely. Sir. So uh, special forces is all about the ability to see what's in front of you and see what's not in front of you and then adapt, adopt, adapt, move, shape your strategies accordingly on the fly or even before it happens you already have an answer to it. It is about creating that mindset. When we started off, sir, it's not that we knew where we were going. But what we did is we assessed the landscape from a, not from a very tactical standpoint, but just like how you would do in special force, from a very holistic and strategic standpoint. And there we saw the gaps. One of the reasons why me and the team decided to start this organization in particular is because we saw these the methods and the practices that were age old and we were not very uh, agreeable to the fact that times have changed and people are not ready to move that's where we decided that we will start an organization like this and when we started this organization one of the biggest challenges is when you try to be a differentiator in a very conservative space like security and risk where everything is super conser super conservative. We were seen as the rebels from the beginning itself. Which plays out in two ways, sir. Majority of the market doesn't want to agree with you because uh, it's more of routine things. But the ones who really face the, the bigger challenges, they understood the value of an organization like us. So if there is 100, pers 100 people out there, we may be servicing the one person of that. But we're happy. Because that one person is the problem that others can't solve. So the mindset of my earlier days in, the, in signals and, the, and the, my father being a technology guy in, in terms of you know TV, VCR and all that stuff and all electronics and the technology part, life in signals and all the way to special forces. Everything played a pivotal role from us graduating from a, a physical domain to all the way to a data science and AI domain. And we were always looking for the biggest problems. We never wanted to go and do volume game where somebody's doing this, fine, we should also go. No, no. We wanted to go exactly the opposite and say, what are the problems right there? How can we do it so different and so better? That's that's always been our thought process. So, yes, indeed, it has been, uh, uh, I would say, sir, the, the hands that has been holding, the thought process and the, the, all the learnings have been that, sir. True. Uh, in fact, uh, when you took me around uh, your facility today and you showed me those data center and other things, I was pretty impressed, uh, Albert, uh, because mm -hmm. I have seen uh, in the corporate that how things work and with such a short experience and that too, you uh, go to the army where uh, technically you stayed hardly f uh, a few months in the core of signal and thereafter you moved on to special mm -hmm. forces. But one thing which you have proved that you don't need too much of technically uh, sound knowledge. What you need is the mindset that you want to take a risk and you took risk there, you, too, you are taking risk here and you build up an organization where you are employing the people, you are giving uh, uh, opportunity to the people to come up and uh, solving certain problems of the corporate world. What do you say that how mindset plays in this kind of... Uh, Sir, please understand that uh, we were, like I said, we started off as a security company, yeah. right? physical security related, that domain. 
it was a sea of change i am not an ai guy or a real estate yes guy. yes but uh, there was a juncture in our uh, organization journey where we saw that this is the next biggest thing if you really want if stakeholders trusted you and you wanted to call yourself to be a specialist then you just can't talk about physical security electronic security no this the, the worlds are converging and we have to be at the forefront and it was a very conscious call and i would be honest sir it was uh, completely dark for us we knew that this was needed but we, we didn't know what to do so all of us including me had to go through this arduous task of shifting gears yesterday i was a physical security guy now i'm a data science and ai guy so we had to learn a ton of things and especially our forensic practice uh, in this part of the world uh, very very few people would have this level of enterprise level compute dedicated to e discovery and for that again it's a very different domain so sir once you know the target once you lock it sir then you just have to go there you can find 100 obstacles but your focus should remain on what you want to do and that uh, consistently being persistent psychotically being optimistic against all odds these are the only things that will take you because there are a million people and million reasons why you should fail when you're taking a big risk like that yes so you already know i mean it's it's no it's a no brainer you are you don't even know this world so you're going to try to be an expert in this world and so please mind it that at that time people didn't even know what ai really meant most of the people were just using it as a job and people didn't understand that and we were trying to invest all our life's investment back into technology and building the data center and uh, partnering with foreign uh, uh, think tanks who were pioneering in this field so it was a huge risk sir it was a but if you decided then sir uh, everything is worth it so that is where the uh, you said that mindset plays and, absolutely sir. Uh, you use the word that uh, you have to be committed you have to be consistent yeah. and you have to be risk taking capable yeah i know i use different words i spoke about optimism in a yeah. very psychotically optimistic yeah, because yeah. that's the amount of negative you receive yeah, yeah. Uh, to be frank sir when you are completely unaware of what what lies ahead uh, one word is enough to discourage a person so when you are going to a field where everybody say are you crazy yes you know you, uh, you don't i don't know you know what ai is yeah i know it's artificial what beyond that i don't know and you want to put all your life into that you you had a good inning and then you're going to change the gear so yes you got to be a little bit psychotically optimistic so so you uh, i can put it that way you know but when people start saying that you are a crazy that means you are doing something different yeah yeah that is where you are i know you like to, you yeah. find the right word but <laughs> so that is the time you are true that yeah. you are doing something different yeah. and you are unique yes and that is what it needed to be successful yes sir, but uh, uh, mind it sir, uh, we are not just um, just crazy crazy we did our research we didn't just go and say that hey today we just switch gear and because we are crazy we going to achieve something no sir we were absolutely methodical in how we went about it uh, we learned a lot uh, individually not just me my team uh, all the way through the leadership and my uh, team members were, uh, across the chain they were there they also switched gears uh, we had a different type of hiring we had new skill sets to come into play but the leadership itself has to learn sir. it's not about I can't just go and say here I want to get into a business without understanding the business just because I'll hire somebody. Well, big organization may be able to do it, so we don't have the. We are smaller organizations, so we ourselves have to take the lead and learn. And there's mistakes you will not even find the mistakes. So we went very methodically, sir. We partnered with think tanks. We went around speaking to some of the best people in the game back then, and now also we continue that relationship. So it was all very well researched and very well worked out. not just like hey free fall and magically a parachute will appear no 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 we've done a gear check and everything but yes still it's a crazy idea to go into yeah i yeah. in fact you mentioned about uh, going methodically and i was seeing your uh, presentation which you were giving to me uh, the various categories which you have mentioned starting from the legal yeah. finances thereafter uh, your crime uh, terrorism uh, economy terrorism economy emerging yeah, yeah all that stuff yeah, yeah. and uh, you are even talking about that uh, 
uh, with the successful landing of uh, Chandrayaan yesterday yeah. on the uh, moon, yeah. uh, you wanted to even include the space as a, uh, one of the uh, category. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what next? Sir, uh, I would say when we started this journey, uh, yes, indeed, we were addressing corporate uh, risk related and intelligence related requirements. But our journey is very clear. We are trying to build something that will be not just for a corporate, but for a national security level. That's that's our commitment, that's our goal. Fantastic. As a company in India, we want to have that capability. The reason why I'm saying that, sir, uh, across the globe, some of the premier organizations out there are harnessing vast ocean of data. And they're able to have some of the best situational awareness. They are able to even understand if one incident happens on this part of the world, what would be the cascading effect on the other part of the world. So the data is there and we are mining it, we are able to process it, we are able to link those things together. And with the huge advancement of the compute as well as data science and AI that is available at this point, we are really looking at making a place where our country can use our technology that can have some of the best situational awareness, whether it's from open source intelligence across the spectrum. I'm not just saying whether it's text, video or audio, not that level. I'm talking about telemetric data. I'm talking about that. We have that capability as of now. And we're building better and better solutions and it's at scale. And, and that's where we want to go. So that's what is there for us. The future is very bright, uh, but I can say that uh, the way you are uh, thought processes, the way you are thinking ahead and the vision is of your company and uh, let me assure you if you continue consistently in this field, uh, sky is the limit like the moon has gone to the sky, you can also reach to that place and uh, all the best for Thank you, doing such a good job Thank you, sir. and uh, last question which I will say, sir, the persons who are leaving from the defense, okay you have made a mark in the corporate world. You are running a successful your business. What would you like to suggest? Few ideas for those people who come out from that and they normally find uh, totally at sea. They don't know what to do, how to do. Some fundamental things which you would like to suggest to those guys. Sir, uh, before getting out, one of the first things I would tell anyone is that you should plan. I, should, I would say that please before you enter in the ops field, that is the civil world, you should have already started the dialogue with colleagues and the peer ones who are there around. The second thing is that one needs to have a balance between practicality and passion. Why I'm saying is that it's not necessary that I hold a passion and I say that I will not do anything apart from that. I want to get into this field and that's the only field. That's where when you start becoming stubborn and not being practical. So it is always good to hold a balance between what you wish to do and what opportunities you're getting. Make the best of the opportunity that is available there. Sir. And there is another side, all of us who are outside, there is a lesson for us also because we were also once in that part. And I find that nothing better than the community as such, who are already there in the field, able to advise them because we have already gone through that cycle and we should be there for those people. We should be there for those people. The option split between what you want to do, whether you want to work or you want to start something. I would always say when you're getting into starting something, you should always well research and prepare because sir, for every successful mandates you see, there are many misses also. Yes. So it is, it is wrong to mislead people and say that, you know what, just, just jump into it and it will happen. No. We all jumped into it, but we all prepared a ton for it also prior. Yes. Before exiting the aircraft, we checked our gear, yes. we had the parachutes and then we jumped. We knew whether we were planning to land also. No, sir? Yes. So it's don't do a night jump without, that's the sort of thing. So yes, prepare before, once you're a month. So when you're out already, you have a, have a basic outline, the industry you want to get into. Uh, sir, it is good to do all the orientations. The other day I was uh, reading some uh, on a chat, somebody was asking about a security certification program and said, we are from the forge, so who knows security better than us? It's not about who knows security better than us. That's being impractical. It is about the outside 
world dictates that you understand this. You know, you get a certification. So it's good to align. You know? So please follow the norms. When you're in Rome, be like the Romans. Yes, yes. Right? Don't jump into it. And sir, you never fear to die. You never fear to jump off a cliff or an aircraft when you're in forge. Don't hesitate once you're out also. This is one thing I've noticed. We get pretty conservative when you step out. There you are ready to charge into the bullets and minefields and all. But when you come out, you become very conservative. No, no. Maintain that fire. Maintain that fire. Be pragmatic. Follow the path that is laid. Break it, but know the rules before you break. So, don't try to do anything very crazy, but do crazy, but plan crazy. That would be what I would say, sir. I don't... You know, sometimes people may take an advice in the wrong way. Hey, just go for it. No, no. Prepare and go for it. So, yes. I guess we have a bigger responsibility. As a community outside, for the ones who are leading, we should be looking out for them. In fact, uh, what you said, this uh, paragraph in the last question, if I can summarize yeah. uh, with your permission, sure. you know, the four points. First thing you said, clarity. Yeah. You should be clear what you want to do before you jump. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And second thing you said is that you should have a courage to do the things. Yeah. And then you said burning desire, hunger And finally, take 10x action. Of course. This is the last thing you told me last minute. You should know what you should do first. Then you should be ready for action. So I, I think you have summarized that uh, yeah. very well. Finally, because this uh, your talk is always people attached with your being in the uh, special forces person. They will always ask me, so, and they will always ask from you what is needed to becoming a special forces officer. Uh, always young lord, na, always they ask these things. So let's uh, horses mouths straight away. What are few things which you think that guy should have in him before he think of so, be, uh, think of becoming, becoming a special forces officer? You have for mine. Yes. I can speak from what I've seen, sir. Yes, yes, is that yes. Everyone uh, with me and uh, before me and after me, uh, one thing is distinct, sir. They never thought about themselves as an important aspect as much as they thought about the one next to them, the team. So, your skills at any point, your skill, will, everything, should be an enabler for the team. And always throughout the special forces selection procedure, I'm trying to come to a very narrowed down. There is a ton of things to yeah, talk about, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, when you judge them with many, many other things, you are essentially putting them through different situations to come to some one or two elements of it. You're looking for a person who has a heart that is bigger when it is about the team. So I may do X for myself. But if it is for my team, I'll go X to the power of N. Yeah. If I if I do X for myself for one thing, it's for the battalion and for the mission, I will go to the X to the power of N. And that's a particular characteristic. Yeah. And how do you get there? There are many ways to get there. It's born, inbred, or you you have really uh, got it. You've shaped yourself through that you know that uh, that path so that you've turned out to be somebody like that. Physical fitness, X, Y, Z, it's a team player component. Yeah. It's extremely, extremely important. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I would summarize it to be. So. I, I fully agree with you that uh, without the team player, you can't do And as a leader, you have to take care of that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, that, so the next person, the team is bigger than you. Yeah. Many yeah. times bigger than you. And when you place that, everything that you do will be, sir different. Yeah. Whether it's your courage, whether it's your stamina, whether it's, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. All the excess that go into, you know, okay. even if you're not able to complete, uh, you're feeling tired, you're only pushing the boundary because the mission will fail, right? You're thinking about the mission and the team. I will not let my team down. So your fitness comes into play. Your mindset comes into play. So, sort of mature over my goal sir. The team and the unit and the mission yeah. is always and always bigger than you, even at the cost of your yes. life. It doesn't matter. That's and bigger. When you talk about the mission, the team already comes in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's one thing. The fitness, 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 people know more than we know. 
that is secondary. <laughs> that's yeah. very secondary. So my insight is, and not necessarily you're a stud, so you will yeah. take. Yeah, yeah. People think that oh, I do this, I do that. Oh. Uh, it's okay, cool, no problem. Mm-hmm. We're not very <laughs> thrilled with that. So Albert, uh, it's a fantastic talking to you. See you sir own office and knowing about your venture, a specialist uh, advisory and intervention group. Sir. And I'm sure uh, it got a very bright future and it Thank will you, grow sir. like a leaps and bounds. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you Thank so you. much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.